<laughs> okay, once this decides to pull up, um, I'll have the uh, uh, there we go. Got the QR code. Okay, so um, so let's get started. Um, a couple things. So I sent a note on Teams yesterday about the weather. But I checked the, like, because last night it said that, like, we might have rain in the afternoon. But then I pulled the report today, and, or right before class, and it says it's going to be pretty clear. We actually won't be in the field all that much. Like, it won't take a long time to do the measurements, so we shouldn't have an issue. But we'll just, uh, we'll play it by ear. Um, I'm still working on uh, labs four through five. I said solutions posted, but there's no, I mean, it's just a lab, so I should probably pick that off. Um, I said I, I, I'm still going to try and have them done by the end of the week. So I'll probably have the grades posted, but I won't have your lab like reports until, until next week uh, and whatnot. Um, homework four is due Monday. Um, uh, has anybody started to take a look at it? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's it up. Like, that's a, that's a Sunday at 9 p.m. thing. That's, that's a Monday morning. Monday, 12 o'clock thing. It will be. It's like a Thursday afternoon. It will be. That's so, so, and, and, and they, they, they call me an optimist, you know. Um, I did want to mention one thing. I had a slight boo-boo on my grade report for exam one, but nobody's grades were affected or anything. I want to show you what happened. So, um, so if you look at your grade report, so I'm just making up some numbers here, but I, I had a little bit of a boo-boo. So like, if you look at the very top, it'll say something like 13, 18, 14, 8. And I just made these numbers up, so let's do this. So if you sum these numbers up, the answer, like you get like an 81, but it says that this is an 85. And the reason is for this problem, I forgot to include one E, but nobody's grades affected. And so in order to ensure that, I literally manually recalculated everybody's grade in the class. So if you want an updated report, I have it. But my apologies for any confusion. But like, so like there were students who got like a, like if you got a 96, it said that there was like 16 points there when really it was 20. So my apologies for the confusion, but don't worry. I manually make sure everybody's grade was fine. So if I owed you points, I would give them. You've given me this look like, this is just a reason to give everybody a hundred. I was going to say, you know, you just let everybody get a hundred and be like, oh, Marshall, whoopsie. You know, just fake it till you make it. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing that, so. You yeah, said we could. I, is that, yeah, we could. I own my mistakes, but that's why I recalculated everybody's by hand, so. My apologies. Okay. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to continue our discussion of angles, azimuths, and bearings. And what I would say is that after today's lecture, um, you'll definitely, uh, for one, you'll definitely understand everything that you need to know about the uh, the homework. But this will this this lecture will get a lot more real in terms of manipulating uh, angles, azimuths, and bearings. I mean, a lot of what we did in the previous lecture was dealing with like. 20 degrees and 30 degrees, and now we're dealing with like 33 degrees, 14 minutes, 58 seconds. Like we're, we're actually getting some specificity here. Okay, so what we're going to do is I've got a couple more examples that I want to do that are a little more in depth, um, and I think you'll um, you'll you'll appreciate these. Uh, a couple things. So let's make sure that we are clear on what's going on. So um, in the land of surveying, we have two different types of directional uh, expressions that we use to uh, indicate the direction of the line, and those are azimuths and bearings. The reason that we have both is that bearings are what we're after at the end of the day usually. We want to know that this line is north so many degrees west or south so many degrees east, what have you. Um, but uh, bearings are more difficult to do computations with. So azimuths which go from 0 to 360, are a lot easier from a computational standpoint. So they mean the same thing, they just have different frames of references, but azimuths are easier to do computations for. Whenever you're uh, doing computations on azimuths and bearings, the conversions are pretty straightforward. So we start at north, so north is 0, and then we turn to the right, or turn in a clockwise fashion. So uh, this is a little different than trig land, you know, if you remember from, from, from trigonometry. 
So this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Again, that's a little different than probably what you learned in algebra and trig. So in quadrant one, this is northeast quadrant. So the azimuth is from zero to 90, and the bearing angle is just equal to the uh, uh, azimuth angle. In the southeast quadrant, the azimuth goes from 90 to 180, and the bearing angle, you take 180 minus the azimuth angle to get that, that acute uh, uh, angle between zero and 90. In southwest, the azimuth is from 80 to uh, two, or from 180 to 270, and to get the angle, we take the azimuth minus 180. So here's 180 minus the azimuth. Here's the azimuth minus 180. Uh, and then in northwest, we take 360 minus the azimuth. Um, any questions on that? Okay. All right. So um, this was the example that we did uh, in class last time, and I just want to walk through and make sure that everybody um, is clear on what's going on here. So what we have here is what's called a closed traverse, okay? And so a closed traverse means that it's a, a, a series of interconnected segments that starts at one point and ends back at that same location, okay? And so our goal, whenever we're looking at the angular component of a traverse, uh, is we're trying to determine the azimuths and ultimately the bearings of each of these uh, segments of the traverse. Uh, and so what we do is we start with a known or assumed forward azimuth. So, for example, we know the azimuth from A forward to B. So from A to B, that is an azimuth of 120 degrees. Uh, and then we take that forward azimuth and we convert it to a back azimuth. How do we take a forward azimuth and convert it to a back azimuth? Does anybody remember? Add or subtract 180. Add or subtract 180 degrees dependent upon the, the number, right? So if the forward azimuth is 120, the back azimuth is 120 plus 180 or 300. Uh, and then we add that interior angle to the right. So three, uh, 300 plus uh, 85 is 385. We don't like azimuths that are over 360. So whenever we see a number that's over 360, we just cut 360 off that. Because if I take an azimuth and I add 360, I'm back to where I started. Uh, and so I just keep doing that. And the idea is if I go back to my original location, I should be back where I started with my AB forward azimuth. Um, and then we did this example in class last time. So this was the example that we did. We said, okay, let me go, go to the notebook, make sure we're all clear on this. So, oh, that's, that's structural analysis. Okay, so we started at 120. We did our back azimuth, added the angle, and then I made sure to note that we subtracted 360. Um, then we keep we we kept going. When it was all said and done, we had an azimuth for B, C, and an azimuth for C, A. We went ahead and completed the very last segment just to say that we did. Uh, and when it was all said and done, we started and ended at 120, and that's sort of our page check uh, at the end of the day. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, I have two more examples for you, um, and I want to differentiate what's going on uh, in them because there's, there's a little bit of a, um, a difference. Um, first off, so let's talk about this next example. So we're going to compute the azimuth of line CD, okay? Um, what I'm doing is I'm giving you a bearing from A to B, and I'm giving you a series of internal angles to the right. This is very real world, okay? Now, um, one thing I do want to point out with this problem, and it might be a little difficult to see right now, but it'll be a much more clear later when we actually start drawing this out, um, is this is an open traverse. Okay? And what I mean by an open traverse is we're going to start at a point and then go to another point you know, like this, like that, like that, like that. And so that's going to be the traverse where it starts and ends, and it doesn't uh, necessarily start and end at the same point. Uh, do we do that in the real world? Yeah, we do that in the real world. Um, whenever you're performing a traverse, if you want control on the traverse, and, and control meaning tying into the coordinates of known points, you can either start and end at the same location, or you can start and end at two separate locations that are also known. So you can do an open traverse uh, as well. But what I'm getting at with this problem is that this problem is an open traverse as opposed to a closed traverse. And I'll show you what I mean, actually, when we, when we go through the, um, uh, the calculations. 
So we're starting off with bearing AB, and we're given two interior angles to the right. Um, and I want to uh, try and determine the azimuth of line CD. My first step is going to be convert that bearing to an azimuth. So, so convert um, bearing AB to azimuth. Azimuth AB. Let me lower this a bit. Okay, so we're given South 14, 26, 12 East. So that's the bearing of AB. So how do we compute the azimuth? of AB. How do we do that? Well, let me ask you this. What quadrant is this going to be in? Two. Quadrant 2. And if we're in quadrant 2, how do we get the bearing or the azimuth angle? Let, let's draw ourselves a little sketch. Okay. So here's the coordinate system, right? So this is north. Okay. And so let's look at AB. So here's A and B is going to be something about like this. Okay, so here's B. So we're going south, so much east, and I propose that this angle is 14 degrees, 26 minutes, 12 seconds. Okay, so this is our bearing AB. How do I compute an azimuth for AB? How am I going to determine the azimuth? What is the azimuth? We start at north and turn. So I'm interested in this angle. How do I get that angle? One eighty. There you go, 180 minus that. So what, first off, let's just be clear. Whenever you're doing uh, uh, angular computations, pictures help. Okay, So don't be afraid to draw some pictures. Okay, So therefore, the azimuth for AB is 180 minus 14, 26, 12. What is that? 14.36 continue. Remember, remember, you got those little little degrees, minutes, seconds buttons that make your life so much faster. Or make the math so much faster. Not your life. The math you got 165, 33, 48. 165, 33, 48. Do I have a second on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got to we got to convert to an azimuth because. Azimuths are by the, the means by which we're going to perform computations. So I'm actually going to over here. Uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to draw a little schematic, and, and I'll put this um, I'll put this in the um, uh, in the the OneNote file here in a second. So we're starting at point A, and I propose we're going to point B. And that azimuth is 165, 33, 48. Let's just have ourselves a little picture over here. Okay? So, now that we've got an azimuth, let me scroll down a little bit. So let's, let's write out AB. So 165, 33, 48. Let's think about our process. So how am I going to get, let, let's, let's think about it like this. I've got A, A, B. How do I get B, C? Well, what's the process? The first thing that we do is if we have A, B, we need back azimuths. We need azimuth B, A. So if I have A, B, how do I get my back azimuth? Add 180. So I'm going to add 180 degrees. And that's going to yield B, A. What is azimuth BA going to be then? 345, 345. There we go, 345. So from A to B is 165. From B to A goes this way. And that's going to be about 345, which makes sense because that's going to be in quadrant four. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put myself a little arrow down here to indicate that's the azimuth going that way. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 
angle ABC. Okay, what is angle ABC? What was that? It was 133, 20, 46. Now, if I add that without breaking out my Casio, what's going to happen? And so whatever I get, I need to take 360 off that. So let's take this plus this and let's subtract 360. Tell me what we get. One eighteen fifty four thirty four. One eighteen fifty four thirty four, and that's azimuth BC. Do I have a second on that? Yeah. Okay, so this is so we'll say. Oh, no, let's let's not squash that. We got plenty of room. So this is after subtracting. 360. Okay, so let's draw that over here. So BC, um, what quadrant is BC going to be in? Two. Two. So that means it's going to go kind of in a southeast direction, right? Mm -hmm. So BC is going to go maybe something about like that, right? So this is point C, and this is 118. 5434. That way. And we got that by turning this angle. And how much did we turn? We turned 133, 2046. Does that make sense? So what did we do? We were facing AB. We back azimuth BA, turn, and we got this. So far, so good? Okay, so now you tell me what to do. What do I do now? There we go. And we do that by adding or subtracting 180. Okay, so that's 54, 34. What is that? 118 plus 180. What is that? 298. And we're going to call that CB, right? So CB going this way is 298. That makes sense because that's kind of in a northwesterly fashion. Now we will add BCD. And what is BCD? It is 54, 31, 28. So what do we get when we add those? Syntax error. That's awesome. Got them. All right. If you have a syntax error, there's a chance that you didn't put the degrees, minutes, seconds on the second. You got to put it on the very last symbol too. Three fifty-three twenty-six two. Three fifty-three. Twenty-six zero two, and I heard a second. So on our sketch, that means from C to D. So how, this is pretty close to north, right? Pretty close north, just a little bit west. So maybe about like that. And so this is and then we got that by turning an angle. Like that. Does that make sense? This is our traverse, okay? And this is what I meant when I said this is an open traverse because based on the data, we started at A and we ended at D. We did not go back to A. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? So I'm actually going to go ahead and put this sketch here in the, uh, in the, the notes here because I, I kind of want us to have it for posterity if I had a pen. So just to be clear, our azimuth for CD is 353 degrees, 26 minutes, 0, 02 seconds. That's our answer. All right. But um, just to make sure that we've got the sketch figured out,
So notice how I've got my angles drawn as angles to the right. So we're turning to the right. And then we'll put my azimuth on here. And then it's kind of hard to write. Like that. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with this? Okay, because this, this is going to be our traverse. And now what we're going to do, we're going to do another one that's a lot longer. Okay? It's a five-sided traverse, but um, you'll see uh, you'll see that this one is a closed traverse. But before I move on, does anybody have any questions with this? The, the reason I, I want to make sure that this type of stuff is clear is we're going to do these types of calculations. We're going to do a lot of them pretty quick, so I want to make sure this is clear. Sound good? Okay, let's do a, um, a five-sided traverse. Okay? So... So, all right, so now we have a five-sided traverse. Does everybody have this? Because I'm going to go ahead and erase this. Okay. All right, so i got a five-sided traverse right here, and just so I don't have to keep scrolling back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and write all these angles here on the whiteboard because we're going to have a long set of angular computations. So we've got 90, 29, 18. We've got 107, 54, 36. We've got 104, 06, 37. All right, we've got 129, 02, 57. And we've got 108.2632. You can tell, like, whenever you're writing these, I think it's a lot faster to use dashes. I just, boop, boop, boop. all right. Now, by the way, um, so this is a five sided traverse, and what these are are interior angles to the right, okay? So um, what we've got is, so let's, let's read the description a little bit. So it says, course AB of a five-sided traverse runs due north. So what I've got is I've got an image. So let's say here's A, course AB runs due north. Okay. And what I've got is I've got a five-sided traverse. This is course C. We'll call this course D. We'll call this course E, and we'll call this course, uh, or, or the course back to A. So we have a five-sided traverse. And what I've got are interior angles to the right, okay? So for example, this, this angle right here, this one, so right there, that one is our 90, 29, 18. Just, just as an example to make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. With me so far? Now, I've got these five angles. So I've got A, B, C, B, E. If I were to sum these angles up, like check this sum, okay, you can sum them and you will get exactly 540 degrees, okay? This is a five-sided polygon. You can determine the sum of the interior angles of a of a. a an inside polygon really easily by taking the number of sides minus 2 and adding 180. For example, a triangle. A triangle has three sides. The internal angles add up to 180 degrees. A uh, uh, um, quadrilateral has four sides. Take the four sides minus 2. 2 times 160 is 360. The four angles in a quadrilateral add up to 360, right? 540 for a five-sided. Etc. Right. So you can add up the internal angles to see what they should be. I guarantee you, when we start doing measurements in the field, we're not going to get 540. We're going to get 540 zero minutes and 12 seconds, or 539 59 56. What what have you? Right. So we're going to before we even start doing traverse computations, this will be something we'll have to correct later. But when it's all said and done, these internal angles should add up 
to be n minus 2 times 180. This one already does. Okay? Um, what we're going to do for this traverse is we're going to compute the azimuths and the bearings of all five sides. Now, the first one is already done. Okay? This one right here. Because the azimuth for AB is 0, 0, 0. What's the bearing? It's north, okay? So you could say north zero degrees east, north zero degrees west, or just north, okay? What we're going to do is see about figuring out the rest of them, okay? So far so good? Okay. Now, there is one part of this problem that is a little confusing, and it will become very clear once we begin. But if there's any one example that illustrates why sketches are needed, it's this one. Okay? So let's go through our calculations. So we're going to start off with AB. AB is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So help me out. When I start off with that azimuth, what do I do? I have a forward azimuth of AB, so what do I need? There we go. All right, so the back azimuth, we're going to add 180. And I get that, right? So now what do I do? Add angle B. Say that again. Add angle B. That is 100% right. Okay. Let's, let's take our time with that. Okay. So let's go to our sketch. Okay. I start with AB. Add 180 to get BA. And then what we're going to do is turn this angle. Right. That's not the first one. That's the second one. Right? That's angle B. It's very easy to just start with this one. You start with this one, all your answers will be wrong. Okay? We're adding angle B because that, if you're facing BA, you turn that much to get BC. So we're turning 107, 54, 36. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's why we're starting with angle B, not with angle A. So we add... 107, 54, 36. And I'm just going to forewarn you, like these calculations, this is going to be kind of long. So just make sure you got room on your paper to do this. So this is going to yield BC. What is BC? 287, 54, 36. Okay, let's put that here on our sketch, 287, 54, 36. All right, tell me what to do. Back azimuth. And we're going to, as you said, subtract 180. So that's going to give us CB, and CB um, is going to be 54, 36. And I think I can do that one in my head. That's 107. Does that make sense? Now what? Now you're going to add angle C. Now I'm going to add angle C, which is 104, 06, 37. So, so what I'm doing is I'm turning from here to here. All right, so what do we get for CD? 212, 113. I'm getting my steps in today. So, 212, 112. So there's that, okay?
Now what? Like I said, this one's going to be kind of long. So that gives us DC. DC. What's that? Mm. Oh, I thought I heard something. If you got questions, don't hesitate. So DC, that's going to be 32, 0, 1, 13. And now we're going to add angle D, right? Because now we're facing DC. So we're at D facing C. And we're going to turn. And we're turning angle D, which is 129, 0, 2, 57. All right, so plus 129, and that's going to give us DE. See, again, this is why this sketch is just money right here, because we, we can see what we're doing. So DE, you like that? Money? All right, so what do we get for DE? This is... Once, did you say 161? Yeah, 161. Okay, 161, 410. So, going that way. Okay? Then what do we do? Back azimuth. So this is E. D, was that 341? Yes, sir. Okay, then we're adding angle E. Angle E is what, 108, 2632? Okay, anybody see a problem? It's going to be over 360. Alright, so what we're doing is we are turning right here. This is where we're turning 108.26.32. Okay, and we're, what azimuth are we getting? We're not getting EF, we're getting EA. We're going back to A, right? Alright, and so what is EA? Do I have a second on that? Yeah. Okay, so I want to show you something real quick. Um, all right, let's make sure we're good on time. Oh, we're great on time. Okay, I want to just take stock of my traverse because this is what I've got. Am I done? Well, let, let, let's qualify that, that answer. Do I have an azimuth for every side? Yeah. North, bam, 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 bam. I'm done. So I have all of my answers. But I'm going to keep going. Okay? Let me show you why. So I've got EA. I'm going to add 180. We'll do it in blue to give me AE. What is AE? A used to say it. Say it again? 269.342. Okay. Now, so look at the order of the angles. I did angle B, angle C, angle D, angle E. I never actually added angle A. I haven't actually done anything with it. Let's do something with it. Let's add angle A. What do we get when we add angle A of 90, 29, 18? What do we get when we add that? 360 or zero, right? So we get AB is zero, 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 zero.
This last set of calculations right here was a check. We technically did not need to do them, but we went ahead and did them because we started at zero, zero, and, or zero, 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 and when we went all the way around, we got back to zero, zero, zero. So we're doing that as a means of ensuring that the math that we're doing is correct. It gives you a means of checking it, so let's apply. Make sense? Okay. Now, the only thing left to do is I want to take this, and I've got azimuths. I want to get bearings. I want to actually reference this north, south, west, east, so that it's a common uh, 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 reference mechanism. Okay? So... Convert azimuths to bearings. So I have a five sided traverse. So let's start with AB, go to BC, CD, DE and then back to EA. Let's record our azimuth, okay? So the azimuth for AB is zero, zero, zero. All right, BC, what is BC? What is that? 287.5436. Then we've got 2120113. We've got 161 10 and 89 30 42. Now Let's convert these to bearings. Now, the first one's done for us. We were given the first one. It's zero, 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 or due north. All right. Okay. Let's talk about the rest of them. So, BC. BC. So which quadrant is this going to be in? Four. Four. So, what two cardinal directions am I going to have? Northwest. northwest. All right. So, this is going to be a northwest, a northwest bearing. And so, how do I get the angle inside here? Three sixty minus this, right? So, we're going off of this right here, right? So. So whenever you're in quadrant four, the bearing angle is 360 minus the azimuth angle. So what is 360 minus this? So we'll put here 360 minus azimuth. So what do we get for that? 72,524. 72,524. Do I have a second on that? Yep. All right. What about CD? Okay, so what quadrant is this going to be in? Three, and so what cardinal directions? Southwest. Okay, and so how do we get the angle that goes between here? Azimuth minus 180. Azimuth minus 180. All right, and so this is going to be, I think I can do that one in my head. Um, that's 320113, right? Okay, what about... Um, DE, what quadrant is that going to be in? Two. Two, so that's southeast. And so how do I get the angle? 180 minus azimuth. Okay, and so what is, now that one I might need some help. What is 180 minus that? 185.50, do I have a second on that? Yes. Okay. And our last one, what quadrant? One. 
And that's just northeast. And how do we get the uh, bearing angle? It's just the azimuth angle. So that is um, 89, 30, 42. So I kind of cheated a little bit when I drew the image because I knew that like EA was going to be northeast. I knew that this was going to be northwest. So I kind of like knew this beforehand. But, the, but even if I didn't know it beforehand, as I'm doing the traverse, I can construct this. So how I might do a sketch for this is I might say, okay, let, let's see if we can make this kind of neat. Okay, so, because I, I, I kind of want to do the whole thing. So this is B. This is A. Okay, this, that's E. Let's see. That's D. That's C. That's B. And so what I might do is I might say, let's put north 7205-24 west, but then under that maybe what we'll do is we'll put 287-54-36. Maybe a little ink, maybe a little mark like that to show it's going this way. Maybe for this one what we'll do is south um, 3201 west and then 2120113 that way and show that it's going that way. This one we'll do north and we'll do we'll get rid of that first one. And then let's see, go like that. Then this one, um, Let's see, we'll do it like this. We'll do south 18, 55, 50, and then we'll do uh, 161, 0, 4, 10, and then we'll do north 89, 30, 42, east. Man, that too is atrocious. I can do better than that. And then 89. 42. And then last but not least, um, what I'll do is I'll put my interior angles. And so this, uh, what do we have? We have, so angle B is 107.54.36. Um, this is angle C, 104.06.37. This is angle D, 129.57. Angle E, 108.26.32. And finally, or siblings own any land and they've had any surveying done of their land and they happen to have a plat of that land, pull it out and you will probably see something that looks like this that shows, shows where the property corners are and it shows the bearings from one point to another. There's a good chance it probably doesn't show azimuths because what it'll show is bearings and distances. It'll say north 89, 30, 42 east for a distance of 115.42 feet, whatever. So. so, yeah. But that is the beginnings of a traverse. I will tell you that, so next week, what we're going to start to do is discuss traverses in more detail. Because up until now, I haven't really discussed distances. And so what we need to do is recognize that when we're doing a traverse, what we're interested in is not just from here to here, the orientation, but how far it is. And so when you combine distances and angles and the fact that we have to correct errors, we've got to start doing traverse computations. And I'll tell you, they are a little long. Like, I'd rather just be honest with you. But they're very step-by-step, -step and they're, they're pretty easy. They're long, but easy. All right?
Any questions? All right, I'm going to pull the code up again. Uh, oh, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Career fair. We have a career fair on Wednesday of next week, and I've got requests for students that want to go to it, okay? So on Monday, we'll, well, let me ask you this. Um, if I were to, here, here's what I'm thinking of doing. Um, I think I'm going to make, a, at a minimum, I'm going to make attendance optional for lecture on Wednesday for the career fair. Do you think an hour is enough to go to the career fair and come back for lab? No. No? Just no? Just no. Tell you what. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We are doing lab on Wednesday. We are. There's no, there's no avoiding it. I don't mind to start lab at maybe 2.30 if you want an extra hour and a half. But we are doing lab. So we'll talk about it in lab for the because it affects the Wednesday group, not the Thursday group. We will talk about it in lab here in the next few minutes. Um, I will post on Teams what we end up doing. So because it affects the Wednesday, that doesn't affect the Thursday. I think we need to account for like the branch I trip over, the, the ambulance that comes to me for the brain injury I got. Like, just, you know, like, like two hours. Two hours. You started three. Do we have lecture on Wednesday? We're go I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pre-record the lecture or I'm going to make attendance optional. It depends on what we do with lab. But I mean, we're having class. Whether or not we pre-record it or make attendance optional, we're having it. So. Will the optional attendance be extra credit? Uh, let me chew on that for a little bit. Hey, four so extra take, credits. Take, take plenty of time to do that. I'll tell you right now. I'll be here front and center to extra credit all day. I'll be here. We'll talk about it in the lab. That's all I got. Um, I'll see you all here in a little bit.